Am I okay? I am. Hi, I'm on keto. I just ate and I've got an abundance of energy. Welcome. I've never heard of Thread Cosmetics. I just saw it on social and I was like, this looks like something interesting that we, the dark skin community, need to try out. So here we are. I picked up three different shades of these stick foundations. I've got 220, 230, and 240. I got these from Target.com and the darkest shade is 240, which is right here. These are medium to buildable coverage with a matte finish and it's $8, okay? So I feel like this could be a contours, yes. Delicious, look at 240. Ooh, and this is a shade 230. Let's see what 230 talking about. 230 could be my foundation. You're gonna think that this is too dark, but this is more what I like because I'm gonna highlight so much. I like the way that 230 looks on me. This is deepest warm red. And then 240 is deepest cool, which is great for a contour. And then this is 220, which is deepest neutral. Mm, yeah, I can see the, okay, I like neutral. What do you think? I like the neutral. It's looking like full coverage to me. We're not gonna use 230. I'm excited about this because it's reminded me of the black opal stick foundations. And if you know, you know. If you used or still use the black opal stick foundations, you gotta comment and let me know because I still love those. They're very dewy and hydrating. This is supposed to be matte, so let's see what it's talking about. Now, I already did my skincare and put on SPF, which is a physical SPF, so you might see a slight purple white cast. That's why, okay? Let's do 220, which is deep neutral all over the face. Yeah, it's gonna make me nice and deep, which is what I like. You might be like, uh, that's too much. I almost forgot to take off the contour. Hold on, we're not doing contour just yet. I'm still sticking with this say brush because it's really good. I like how it is tightly packed kabuki. So it allows you to get full coverage because it's just tightly packed. It's dense and that's how these dense brushes work. Ooh, I did not prime my face. I wanna see how this gonna do on the skin by itself. But of course, when you really wanna intensify the mattification of your foundation product, make sure that you prime your face with a matte primer. I'm seeing the medium because I can still see this blemish right here. It's not the end of the world, but I can still see it. But this is buildable, so I am going to put some more on those spots in a moment to see what happens putting more on my brows because you know if you don't i like to have my brows look different with makeup on than i do when i don't have on makeup and that's just my prerogative okay everyone's entitled to their own prerogative everyone should do whatever they want to do because <laughs> Listen, if you don't know, know right now, I'm gonna do what I wanna do. You feel me? So here we are. Went back with some more product, just on a few key spots to give us more coverage, okay? Now this is a cream, so depending on how you like or don't like creams on your face, you may wanna do a light application of this to just get that medium coverage, but I like a full coverage beat. And it doesn't feel heavy. It actually reminds me of the black opal stick foundation in the sense that it feels like a cream. It's not uncomfortable. It just feels like a cream product on my face. I didn't do too much under my eyes because we're gonna conceal you feel me oh my god i like this i like it you gotta comment let me know i think this looks so good okay i had to re-up on my concealers from black opal because these are just so good also from target i like using maple under my brow to highlight because it's not too light but it's just perfect and i also grabbed proper penny because i'm hoping that this will look good under my eyes however i'm a little concerned because she's looking real wow yeah she's very light <laughs> Ah, this particular shade is very light. This is not normally what I would put under my eyes, but here we are. So this is a shade that I would keep if let's say I put on a concealer that is not dark enough for my under eye and then I wanna brighten it, then I would take this shade. But since we're already here, let's just take this maple situation under the eye, keeping the same brand and I'll show you what I mean when I'm like, okay, this is not bright enough. This is good on my skin tone for under my brows because it's light, but not too much. But now here we are putting it under the face and it's also pink. It goes under the brow, but it's not what I'd be wanting under the eye. But here we are. And what do we do on this channel? We make it work. So we're blending the two right now, okay? Beauty sponge is dampened. If you don't know what I mean by that, watch my video where I talk all about the differences between your sponge being damp, soaked, and I even used it on my face on one side when it was soaked and showed you what happens. Cause you might think you're dampening your sponge and perhaps you're using it when it's soaked. Okay, that blended very nicely. It really, really did. So let me take some more of this proper penny and see what it does. Maybe it melts really good and maybe I can use it. With this shade though, 
because you know, if you don't, that the shade of concealer is going to look different based on the shade of your foundation. So if this foundation were really dark on me, this concealer would look way too light. It'd be giving gray cast craziness. But right now, wow, okay. This actually looks pretty. Okay, let's blend this side. I like to explain that way and use a product like this when I have it, because I understand what it's like. I'm putting some more just like I did on this side. When you purchase something, be it online or in person, and you think it looks right, and you think it's gonna fit you, and you get home and it doesn't. You may not wanna go back to the store, you may not be able to, whatever the case is. So there are times where you could mix and make things work. Instead of taking more product like I did, you could just do less of the actual product. So less concealer, instead of using two different ones. You gotta finagle it and really see how you want it to look. And now I'm looking and I see an imbalance because I see it lighter on this side than on this side. So, right? Do we see an imbalance? I don't know. <laughs> this is really, look, I know I do this all the time. This is really not doing what I like. <laughs> you know, this be happening. It really do be happening. And then I start to scream. <laughs> and then I start to talk in a very high pitch voice. We're gonna highlight, okay, under the cheekbone, we're gonna highlight. That's gonna give us what we need, cause under the cheekbone, I do want it to be popping, you feel me? Taking some from the upper lip, creating a very drastic line, and then we are going to blend that out with the bottom of the sponge. This is so damp that it really just feels cold right now. I'm not putting any water onto my face, okay? And that is allowing for me to get a good payoff from the color of this producta. Is that pro? How do you say product in Spanish? I'm done. I did what I could, okay? Praise the Lord. I really, really did. And you can be real dramatic and bring this real close to the mouth. Back in my Mac days, I would do that. And it really does make a difference. We're gonna contour. We're gonna contour with the other color, okay? Now let's get a close up under the eye. What does the under eye look like? I mean, we do have fine lines. <laughs> yeah, girl, it's a mature one. You feel me? We're gonna set all this in a second, so don't be alarmed. You know, ring the alarm, not today. Okay, praise the Lord. This is two, four, oh, bless God, I'm excited. The Lord has been faithful to me. Has he been good to you? Comment and let me know. Okay. Ooh, we're not doing the Olympic circles now. I'm trying not to drag and mess up my edges, but we have to, because I don't want Olympic circles. Although it gave me, it gave me circles, and that's not what I wanted. This looks like a really great color, a really great shade. You could use the butt of your damp beauty sponge to blend this out, but I'm going to use a brush instead, because I really want to manage this well. I'm wiping off just haphazardly, this review brush. And then we're gonna just get right up in here, okay? Wow, very nice shade. For $8, very nice shade, cause you know I be using one from, I be using a few, you feel me? It depends on what video you're looking at. I be using a few, get this into the hairline, okay? Little by little, we don't wanna disrupt the layage, you feel me? But you do gotta get into the hairline for this to look natural. And I'm going in fast, stippling motions, like press, then like, then flick, press, flick, press, flick. I'm flipping it back into my hairline, okay? Because we're not trying to go forward, we're trying to bring this back. And bring it into the hairline. You may find it easier if you're a beginner to use your makeup sponge, but I like to use a brush. I like to interchange, like it just depends. We're gonna blend this out, do not be alarmed, all right? And then the same on the other side. I start with the cheek closest to the hairline. This is deep, wow. I just wiped off my brush to be able to blend and not apply so much. This is deep. I could have applied less product. Wow, this looks so good. Don't be alarmed at how stark all of this looks. Again, wiping off the excess product from the brush onto a paper towel in front of me so that I can now focus more on blending instead of the actual application. First time using this, so I know that I could go, I could do less next time because this spreads very, very well. I need to fill in my edges, but we're not there yet. We're not there yet. Don't get ahead of yourself, okay? All right, so. Oh, here we have it. Get it like right up in here a little bit, you know, so it's not too harsh. Gorge. Now, I normally will take products that's left over on the brush onto my nose, but I've been wiping this so much. We do have some left over. <laughs> so let's get this you know, to contour the nose. And this brush is a fluffy one. It is, 
how do you say it? Like pinched, like a rectangle, but not really a rounded rectangle. You feel me? It's like that. And I'm just getting what's left over on this brush to apply to my face because this color is so pigmented. And I don't need this to be too stark. So I don't want to go into the actual product itself. And right here, I'm pressing to really get this to be pronounced. It's very light. There's not much on here anyway. If you're still contouring your nose, let me know. If you've never contoured your nose, girl, let me know. And if you don't even know where to begin, let me know. Because I want to be able to do videos that are detailed. So you know what you're doing. Some of you, I feel like, be watching just to be entertained. You feel me? And then you don't have any plans, you know, on doing anything that I've showed you. And I, I do appreciate you because you watch it. You feel me? But I want you to actually be learning. Bless God. So let me know what else you need. But of the sponge, and we're going to blend the areas that look hard and weird, which is the space between the highlight and the contour, okay? And here we go, turning it this way. Did you catch that? Okay, and then keeping it in the same position and making a half circle around the face and just trying to blend all of that out. And I think it looks good. What do you think? Comment and let me know. Okay. Did we feel like this was too much of a you? I did. So there's leftover product on the pointy part of the sponge and I'm just gonna go like this. Look at that makes it more defined. And then like this to what? Blend out the line of demarcation. Do we see? If you're listening with earphones on, come in and let me know. <laughs> Let's use the Givenchy set in Paris oui, because we used the last time e and we had e a great time e we did e. <laughs> this is five because there's other ones that I used. There's another one that I used that matches my skin tone more, and I really wanted to highlight, so I'm not gonna use that one this time. You got the quad of powders that mix together and then brighten and set the face in a very beautiful way. It's been a long time since I've set my concealer with a sponge. Wow, do y'all still do that? I'm so annoyed whenever I say, do y'all still do that? Cause I be feeling like, <laughs> I be feeling like we're not doing the same thing. You feel me? I have not done that in so long. Should I? Should I go back? Cause it's, it's just so tricky. Like sometimes it works and sometimes it's a disaster. I don't want a disaster today cause I am filming. <laughs> like sponsored content. Make sure that there's no creasing in these glorious fine lines of wisdom. And then I'm using the Sephora 79 brush with the product. And here we are. Pressing it onto the under eye area. Make sure you get really close to the waterline because a lot of times that can get skipped, at least on me. And then it just looks greasy. Like where the lash line is, it's weird. Okay, so let's do the other side. What are we gonna do to set our contour? I mean, I don't think it's, it's mandatory, but I do wanna do it because that's just what I do. You don't have to do it, at least not based on how this looks. But again, that's just what I do, you know, and I wanna do what I do, you know what I mean? I haven't even sprayed my fragrance today, I'm annoyed. This is Alien Mugler, Mugler, you know, and this is, this is Eau de Parfum. I'm trying to look, it's very mysterious. You feel me, look, you gotta get the right angle to see what this is. Elixir, hi. I have to spray my hands too, so that when you're moving about, you get a continual whiff of the scent. All links to all products are below, by the way. Mm, this smells so good. You gotta smell yourself while you're dressing yourself up. First of all, smell yourself at all times. Okay, I digress. This always chips me up. Patrick Star, what is this? I, it always gets me. Tell me I'm not the only one. Cause the star and the ta always get me. Like, ah, okay. Made for shade, bronze and sculpting trio. Goodness gracious, it's too much for me. This is the Sephora 59 brush. So here's this. It's gonna deepen and then take down the shine. Leftover product is now going under my chin. Now we do the face powder, which is the powder that I put on my face in a finishing style. And the powder that I've got is Kosas Cloud Set. The shade is Vel. Whoa, I thought this was a twist and turn, twist and turn. Yeah. As you can see, I love music. This is not a twist and turn. This is a flip and open. I'm irritated. Hi. Sorry, it's been a while since I've used you, so I forgot how you worked. <laughs> I literally just had to stop because I thought something was wrong. Oh, wow. I'm using different products. That's the thing. It's giving me matte face, and I was not expecting that. Because, Am I okay? I am. 
Hi, I'm on keto. I just ate and I've got an abundance of energy. Welcome. So we are going to highlight the face because it is not highlighted right now. It's been a while since on dry skin, I've put a highlight. This is the Rare Beauty highlight on the color Flaunt. I'm gonna use the butt of the beauty sponge just to help it melt to the skin some more. And I'm doing it right, see like, and then I'm gonna turn it over to a cleaner side and focus more on the blending as opposed to the application. But then I just went back and did some blending. You see, I need to spray my face. On matte skin, I'm no longer a fan of a highlighted face. Just on matte skin, it just doesn't look as natural. I like it when the skin looks a little more wet. So, so far this foundation is really nice. It is giving me matte and I did not even prime my face. So I didn't even help it, you see? Pinching to go right down the middle of the nose for the this highlight, honey. This is a frosty highlight, obviously. Shimmery, frosty, like frosty the snowman. <laughs> if you say frosty like me, comment, let me know. <laughs> frosty, you feel me? Under the lip, cause we gotta go under the lip. Under the lip, it ain't the lip, it's the lip. I love it, okay. And then, oh my God. I tried to re-up on Golden Hour, doing some Myrick's Yummy Skin during the Sephora sale, and I was way too late because it's so that I'm so annoyed. So here we are, Golden Hour. It's looking so different to me because I don't have the highlighted under eye. I don't have the bombastic highlighted eye the way I usually do. You feel me? So it's just not giving what I need. It's just different. But mind you, this is the way I used to do my face. I used to have a completely matte face like years ago. But this is gorgeous though. This is gorgeous. What do you think? We've yet to do brows and lips. I don't wanna hear it. Don't tell me it looks wild. We are building a canvas. Another shade that I love is Prima Donna. All right, this is giving subtle, Blush, do I want this blush to be more pronounced? What do you think? If you know me, what do I like? Okay, leftover product to deepen this contour so that my blush doesn't take it over so much. Beauty Blender has a four in one boo, pe <laughs> four in one peptide, what? It's called Boost 4-in-1 Firming Peptide Setting Spray. So I don't want that spray because I wanted to make my face a little bit dewy because it's looking so flat right now. However, I want you to see the whole madness of the foundation and everything. So let me leave it alone, let me leave it alone. Let me use my eyebrows and come right back. Okay, so now to highlight underneath my eye, I'm gonna use the Black Opal Concealer in the shade Maple, like I said. Always putting some behind my hand. And I can't find my other brush. I do have the Sephora 45 brush, which will work just as good. And we're gonna carve right beneath the brow. This is really good. It's very pointy. I don't use this like I should. Hold on. Look at that. Nice and clean and sharp. And again, the shade is so good. It's bright, but not too bright. You feel me? And then the pointy part of the sponge we're gonna use to blend this out. Let's not forget to set all of this with the same Givenchy powder. And we're keeping this look very simple. I'm gonna use the, the Kosas Cloud Set again, that powder, and put this right over my eyelid. Almost non-existent, but enough to know that there is something above the eyelid, you know? Very natural look. The mascara and the lashes are definitely gonna take it up a little bit, but still, it's giving everyday glam, you know? Now what I do do is take the leftover bronzer and the brush that I used for the bronzer and I be going right here so that there are no lines of demarcation on the outer part of this eye area. This face is still matte, oh my goodness. Man, normally you would see my face a little oily as I've made my way through. Like my face feels dry in a good way. Not in a bad way, but I can feel that this is a matte product. Wow, I like it. I'm gonna do something a little different. This is a L'Oreal Infallible Grip 36 Hour Wear Gel Mechanical Eyeliner. And I'm gonna use this on top of my eye. This is gray. I've never done gray above my eye. We're doing a little something funky today. Gray eyeliner on brown skin, come on. Talk about it. I'm gonna just smudge the outer part just very lightly. This is the intense black shade. I do want my waterline to be black. I think the 
gray eyeliner would have been so pretty in the waterline. Next time for sure, okay, using the back of this eyeliner to smudge the bottom. Makes the art of smudging so easy. Gotta highlight the tear duct. This is Color Chalk by Milk. This is the shade Jump. Okay, it's giving orangey gold. I'm gonna add hopscotch because I want this to be brighter. It's not brighter enough for me. There we go. Wiping off the brush and blending a little bit more. Now mascara, I've used a few of these before. Do I have a new one? We do have the Fenty Beauty Hella Thick Volumizing Mascara. Wow, talk about the packaging and everything. Wowzers, hi Fenty, how are you today? This big old thing has a mirror. Wow, hold on. It's one of those mirrors that makes you look like a peanut head. I'm so irritated, no, 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 no. That's not what I want, mm -mm. No, don't come and distort me. Here's the tube, this is too much. Let's look at the wand, okay. Let's see what she's talking about. Oh, yo, off rip, this is good. Wow, hold on a second. I wanna use this on my bottom lashes. Wow, wait a minute. I am not always impressed with these mascaras like that. This is so good. It is not even requiring 17 coats in order for it to work. And I always apply my mascara just like this. Left and right, up and down. Twist if you wanna twist and turn, twist and turn, yeah. What? With this kind of performance, I normally will put this on the bottom lashes because it's so stinking good. This looks so good, wow. Now, I love mascaras. I love lashes, so I am gonna put some on. But if I didn't want to, or if you don't want to, this is the kind of mascara that you could definitely put on without a lash and still feel like, yes, hi. I'll do the bottom lashes in a second, and you're gonna see. I'm unearthing a brand new lash container, honey, less than $3. AliExpress, I always link these below, grab one, do it, join the club. Okay, so I'm cutting off the little, little pieces at the end, do you feel me? Okay, now you know I always use Lola's one and done under my lashes, but we're gonna take this Fenty one today. And let's see what she taught. Wow, I might have a new fave. It doesn't come out as chunky as Lawless, but I feel like this would do good on my bottom lashes if I were to let the first coat dry and put it on again. Cause I actually prefer that chunky bottom lash look. You might like it just like this, which I think is still really, really pretty. So it just depends on what you like. Oh my God. Second time around. I like this a lot, okay? Now let's do our lippy. I have a new lippy from L'Oreal Paris, okay? This is the shade 103, Le Rosy Confident. Okay, detail on the drugstore lipstick. This is obviously how it would look without a liner. We're clearly going to wear a liner, right? You know that. <laughs> this color is so beautiful, nice and matte. Okay, drugstore, I like that a lot. <laughs> This is the Juvia's Place Luxe Liner in the shade Cola. So when you apply a liner after you have applied the lipstick, you have to apply it, wipe it off, like continue to apply, wipe it off, apply, cause it's gonna mix in with the lipstick. And I'm just doing this to show you, but if you're not new, then you know I never apply my lip this way. I do the liner and then I do my lipstick. So you apply it in place, wipe it off, and go back. And I'm making the liner thick so that I can ombre. And then just keep blotting until it looks how you want it to look, really. Okay, this looks so cute and so pouty. My face is still so matte. I am blown away by Thread Cosmetics. I'm blown away. I think that this will look so good with a gloss. My face is so matte. What do you think? Would you put a gloss on this or would you leave it matte? Let me know. I am gonna put on this gloss from Sephora Collection. This is Outrageous Intense 02. This is a cute shimmery pinky gloss. Okay, here's a side by side. What do you think? Do you prefer the matte lip or the gloss lip? Comment and let me know. All right, the look is finished. I'm glad you watched the video. If you laughed at least one time, comment below, let me know. All products are linked below. I'll leave you two videos to choose from to watch after this one, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.